Hey, thanks for clicking over to learn more about Pixlr.com. Pixlr.com is an absolutely amazing image editor. Not only is it hosted online so you can use it from anywhere at any time, but this program is hugely powerful. In fact, I almost always find it absolutely amazing how well Pixlr does with all of the graphics. So let's take a look at it. So here we are on Pixlr.com. And you can see up at the top here, we've got the Pixlr Editor. Now they do have a couple of other programs, Pixlr Express, which is for your phones and your iPads. Uh, Pixlr Omatic, which is uh, just does little touch-ups and little special effects to your uh, pictures. Pixlr Grabber, which is a plug-in for Chrome and for Firefox to be able to grab images and edit them. But what we want today is to go to the editor. And when we open up the editor, you'll see that it actually looks a lot like Photoshop. You've got your tools over here, you've got your palettes over here, and you've got your options for your tools up at the top, and then your menus above that. So very similar to Photoshop. And if you look at your tools here, a lot of the tools are very similar as well. You've got your move tool or your arrow, you've got your crop tool, you've got your selection tools, you've got your magic wand tool, you've got pencils and pens and paint brushes and all that kind of fun stuff. You've got the paint bucket. You've also got an eraser tool. You've got your gradient tool. You've got a stamp clone tool. You've got a drawing tool. You've got a color replace tool, a blur tool, a sharpen tool, sponge, smudge, dodge tool, burn tool, spot healing tool, a red eye reduction tool, a bloat tool, a pinch tool, your text, the color picker tool, a hand tool, and zoom tool. So we're going to go over each of those and what they do for us. So let's start off by opening up an image. And in this case, I think we're going to choose a certificate. Now, this is from the graphics package that I give free at the end of this video. And we're just going to choose one of the certificates here. And when the certificate opens, you'll notice that uh, everything looks great. Now, there is one issue here with uh, using Pixlr versus Photoshop. If you open up this in Photoshop, you'll be able to just select your uh, text tool, click on this, and just change the text that's sitting there. Now, when you open this inside of Pixlr, the text is no longer actual text. It's actually a graphic. So what you would have to do is you'd have to go over to your Layers palette, and you'd have to turn off the text and then add the new text yourself. So uh, if we find our certificate here, certificate of guarantee, we're going to turn that off and we're just going to create our own. But it's very easy to do. You can still do all the cool things you want to do. You just have to uh, start a little bit from scratch there. Choose our size. And you can see that we still make some very cool graphics very quickly. We don't have to worry about designing any of this stuff. It's already there. We just have to change our text. And again, for the middle section here, we'll add more text. And we'll change our font first here. Go with like a 25. Now you can see that when we type this in here, it's going to go way off the page here. So what we have to do is we just have to take a look and figure right after the word any, we're going to want to cut that off. So we're going to go back and we're going to go to any, hit return. And then the next one we'll do at 100%. And actually we'll go a little bit earlier because we want to center that up a little bit, give it a little more, hit OK. And now if we select our move tool, we can actually move this around a little bit. And you get the idea. Just a great looking graphic that you can edit inside of Pixlr.com. Again, a little bit easier in Photoshop because we can just click the text and retype. But still not difficult and you still get some great results with it. So now let's talk a little bit about some of the other tools that are here inside of uh, Pixlr.com. And to do that, I'm actually going to open up a, an image. And in this case, we have a, a nice image of me and a giant fluffy crown, which is great. And I'm just going to show you some of the image manipulation tools that they have. And you'll notice up at the top here, you've got your edit tool, 
which allows you to do free transforms and things of that nature. Now, free transform, if we click that, this allows you to reshape the layer however you'd like. In this case, we're going to leave that alone. But Next, you've got your image menu, which allows you to create an image size. So if you wanted to resize the whole image, you could do that here. If you needed it at a certain, uh, you know, certain pixels, you can do that. So if you needed it by 800 by 300 or whatever, you could set that here. The other thing you can do is you can set your canvas size. Now, the difference between the canvas size and the image size is that the image size is going to uh, crop everything that's in there to that size. The canvas size is a little bit different because this gives you a bigger canvas to work in. So in other words, this image here, this layer will remain the same, but the canvas around it that you could use would be bigger. Of course, you've got your rotate canvas. You've got your flip. So if you wanted to flip it horizontally or vertically, you could do that. Okay, we're going to undo that. The next menu is your layer menu. Now the layer menu, you've got the ability to create new layers, to duplicate layers, and to delete layers. You can open an image as a layer. You can open an image URL as a layer, which actually that's something that you can't do in Photoshop, so there's a, an advantage there. And you can open from your library as a layer. You can do things like merge down, merge visible, and flatten your image. And what that does is if we go over to our layer palette here and we create a couple of layers, and even though they don't have anything in them right now, you see that we've got uh, a couple of layers here. If we were to, uh, let's just put some, oh, let's just put a, a box on one, and uh, we'll put a different colored box on the other layer. You can see we now have three different layers and of course you can change those around if you wanted but what will happen is if we go back to our layer menu here and we were to do let's say merge visible what that would do is if you watch our layers panel over here when we hit this you'll see that it now flattens all those layers into one so we can no longer just uh, move the orange box it, it's now a part of that one layer and so is the black box so let's undo that Okay, and in, in most cases, uh, the flatten image does the same thing. So that would flatten all of them into one. The only difference between merge visible and flatten would be is if we had the black layer turned off so we can't see it, and we were to hit merge visible, it would merge the background picture in the orange square, but the black square, because it was not visible, will still be its own layer. And of course, we could still move that around. Okay, so let's undo that again. We'll actually turn those off for a moment. Now if we move down our layer menu here, you can see that you can move layers up and down. You can add layer styles. You can rasterize layers. Now rasterize layer takes a layer such as a, a layer of text and turns it into a flattened image so that you can actually manipulate it differently. So we just basically turn it from a piece of text into a graphic. And the other thing you can do is you can add layer masks, delete layer masks, and apply layer masks. And a mask is essentially an area that you are able to edit. So basically you're blocking out one particular area. You can also rotate the layer, just like you did with under image. You could rotate the entire image. Well, in this you can rotate just the layer if you'd like. And same thing with flipping vertical and horizontal. Now the next menu here we have is the adjustments menu. Now this is where you can do things like adjust your colors and adjust, adjust your brightness. And these work very much like Photoshop. So if we go over here and we choose our background layer again, and we were to adjust our brightness and contrast, then we could just do things like this until we get something we liked. Okay, hit OK and we're done. And of course you can also adjust the hue and the saturation. So if we wanted to make it very saturated or black and white we can do that we can also adjust the lightness of the whole image and we can adjust the hue so we can turn it all sorts of funky colors here okay if we hit colorize it gets a little bit more extreme <laughs> it turns it into one color print that you can change here so we're gonna we're just gonna cancel that for now leave that the way it was uh, also, in your adjustment layers, you have more advanced things like color vibrance, levels, curves, and exposure. Uh, level curves, 
this is where you can actually use these curve like or this while well, it's a straight line now but these curves by grabbing on and pulling it to adjust different portions of the image now I know this uh, this can be a little confusing but basically what you're doing is you're manipulating different portions of the color palette here so when I manipulate here only a certain portion of the image is being adjusted etc when I do this uh, and this is a much more advanced feature that most people are never going to need, but it just allows you to, to adjust colors and brightness and things of that nature at a very, very uh, specific location. So we're going to cancel that for now. And exposure is just like a, uh, a camera. This is like the exposure opening the iris of a camera. It just opens it up and closes it down. Okay. Now, levels is one that's very interesting. People will use this quite a bit. This shows you your mid grays, your whites, and your darks. And you can adjust based upon that. You can see the darks are getting darker, but the lights are staying the same. If I go over here, the lights will get brighter, but the rest of the image will not change. And the mids will change the face and you know some of the mid-tones and things like that. And it just allows you to really uh, bring out the vibrancy of, of some of the, uh, the darks and the lights in your image. Okay, we'll cancel out of that. Now, once you get down here, you've actually got an Auto Levels button, which will allow you to automatically, in this case it didn't really make any changes, but if you had uh, some changes that it really felt were necessary, it would automatically make those changes for you and adjust to uh, proper levels. But you can do things underneath this that are uh, not really uh, filters per se, but are uh, effects you can add so you can invert your colors. So it's a, kind of a negative there. We'll undo that. Sepia tones. So there's just a lot of really cool things that you can do inside of here. It's a very, very strong uh, you know, photo manipulation and graphic design program. Very, very, very good uh, comparison to Photoshop in a lot of ways. You can posterize, you know, all sorts of cool stuff. And then, of course, you got the fun stuff. You got your filters. And I'm not going to go through all of these, but these are just, uh, you know, there's not much that can be said about them. They're just fun stuff things you can do just for fun so you know vignettes and and things like that that you can mess around with okay the next thing is the view which is straight up you know zoom in zoom out actual pixels show all uh, the navigator which is this over here you know your layers panel your history panel your tool options uh, you can go into full screen mode you can reset the palette location so it's just uh, basically how things laid out in the program itself here and of course language you can choose your language and help just gives you some information about the product okay so now let's take a look at some of the tools that we have over here you can see that we've got uh, the crop tool now if we take that we can crop the image down to whatever size we want so now this is the entire image Okay. That's great if you've got a, a picture where there's a lot of dead space on the top or the side. You can crop it down to fit in. The move tool is just what it is. You can grab layers and move them around like we did earlier. Now the selection tool here allows you to select an area of the image. Once you do so, you can kind of move that around if you want. And uh, let's say we choose you know, this whole head area here. You can actually then add a, an adjustment to that. So let's say we wanted sepia. Well now only the selected area has been given the sepia tones. So you can just do things to selected areas. Okay. Now the lasso tool is very similar except that you can choose whatever shape you want. Okay. Now you can also do things like feather this. So if we were to feather this to 38 and uh, do this again like this and then we were to apply an adjustment to that like a solarize you'll see that it kind of feathers out the edges there so it's not a a hard edge uh, it's pretty close to a hard edge we didn't you know if we went for a hard, higher feather but you can see that it goes from that slowly back into the uh, image there so there's, there's just that little bit of feathering there okay we'll undo that now the next tool that we have here is the magic wand now the magic wand the way that works is let's say we wanted this crown to be, uh, you know, instead of being purple, we wanted it to be red. So with the magic wand tool, 
you can select areas. Now you can see it's not selecting everything that we want. So you can go up and you can change the tolerance here. So let's change the tolerance to 143. And uh, we'll click off of that. We'll click the purple now. Yeah, that's a little bit too much. So let's go back to, let's say, 66. And you can see there it shows most of the purple. And if you hold the Shift key down, you can select even more. Uh, now it's getting to be too much there. But, yeah, so now we're grabbing too much. So there, once you grab that purple there, then you can actually go in and you can do your adjustments to your hue and saturation. And just that crown area that's purple will be affected by whatever you do. So there we go, we wanted it to be red. So there's our red crown. You can adjust the saturation up if you want. And just have some fun with it. And you can see now we've gone from purple to a, a nice bright red color. Okay, and that's our magic wand tool. Now we've got a pen and a paintbrush tool. And these pretty much work the same. Basically, you just choose that. You can choose a, a size of you know, what you want to draw. And then you can just draw all over your image there. Fun stuff. Okay. Now the next thing I want to show you here is the eraser tool, which allows you to just erase whatever's on the image there. Okay, now the paint bucket feature will allow you to fill an area with a color. So this white area here, if we have got this set on black here, and we click on this, it's just going to fill in that area. So whatever area matches up well, it's going to fill that in, you know, in little bits and pieces. Okay. The next tool is the gradient tool, and all that does is it allows you to create a, a gradient here. So you can, you can choose different colors and things of that nature and create different gradients over an image if you wanted. Uh, I've got some pre-built ones. You know, this is great for if you just need to create some backgrounds and things of like that. You can change it to a linear and do things like this. You can uh, change your mode if you want. So you can add and, you know, uh, do alpha things and all sorts of fun stuff with that. So the next tool I want to show you is the clone stamp tool. Now what the clone stamp tool is good for is cleaning up uh, little blemishes and things of that nature. And for instance, if you look at the hat here, you see there's a, a black sticker on the brim of the hat here. Well, let's say we didn't want to have that sticker there any longer. So what we could do is we could hit Command on the Mac or Control on the PC and click on this white area here. And then manipulate our tool over here. And we can draw over that area with that distance. So basically when I click here you can see the target and then the uh, the destination the target looking like a little target and the destination being the location. So what it's doing is it's grabbing what's in the target area and drawing that over the other area. So because the targets on the white part of the hat it covers over the dark area with white and follows through with that until it's gone. So just a very easy way to manipulate and change uh, some of the graphics that are on there. Okay, the next tool that we're going to talk about here is the color replace tool. And again, this is, uh, if we were to click on here, you'll see that it's replacing our color with that red color there. Okay, if we do it over here, you'll see it's doing the same thing here. A little more extreme, but it just allows you to replace the colors with another color. The drawing tool we've already talked about that allows you to create images. And when we click on that, if you come up here, you can choose the square, the rounded square, the circle, or the line. You can choose your opacity. You can choose your mode if you want, and the size. The next tool is the blur tool. And uh, just like it sounds, the blur tool just allows you to add a blur to an image. So if we choose a nice big brush here, like a 200, okay, and let's say we wanted to blur this face out just a little bit here, it just adds a little bit of a blur, and eventually it'll blur it out enough to really see here. 
You just keep doing that over and over again. It just applies a slight blur to your image. And the next tool next to it is the sharpen tool, which does the opposite. It kind of pro kind of uh, sharpens up the image a little bit. So if we were to come here, there's not a lot to sharpen there, so it's going to be a little tough to see. But basically, it just sharpens up. You can see a little bit on the crown there that it starts to really grab some of those details and makes them look a little bit rougher. Okay, you can kind of see it there. Maybe you'll see it on here a little bit. The smudge tool will definitely be a little more noticeable if we uh, grab a good sized brush here. This is literally going to smudge things around. <laughs> so uh, you can have a little bit of fun with that if you'd like. The sponge tool is a color manipulation tool. And we can choose a size here, 200. And right now we've got it on saturate, but you can also put it on desaturate. So you can see it just adds more saturation to whatever it touches here. And if we put it on desaturate, the exact opposite. Boop. Okay. You can do it even more. The dodge tool, now the dodge tool is a very interesting tool. Uh, it's a little tough to explain. Because what it's going to do is it's going to deal with light. So you're basically drawing with light. And hopefully we can kind of see in some of these areas. It manipulates the color based on light. And it's difficult to kind of figure out. See, if you notice on black, it's not going to do anything at all. But on here, you can see it's kind of lightening up the areas that it touches. But it's only going to lighten lighter colors. It's not going to mess with the darks as much. Let's undo that. The next tool that we have is the burn tool, which is exactly like it sounds. What it's going to do is it's going to burn whatever it touches. So you can see it. It's not just darkening everything, but it's taking the colors and, and kind of burning the, the appropriate spots. So it's not just darkening everything evenly. It's darkening what it needs to and leaving the rest alone. So you get kind of this burnt out look a little bit. Okay. The next tool, of course, is the red eye tool, which uh, we don't have any red eye to really mess with, but you would use that on somebody's eyes that are red. Now, the patch tool is another tool that's interesting. Uh, very similar to the clone stamp tool in some ways. What we're going to do is you're going to patch an area. Okay, you can see there, like if I choose uh, this eye here, it's going to try and patch that up. You see it removes the eye. It's going to take the pixels that are around it and kind of remove that. So if you had a spot, see in this case it's kind of removed my eye from there. Let's remove my eyebrow. Just select that. It's going to take the, the skin tones around it and kind of blend over it to make it disappear. Um, not always the best tool in the world, but it can be great for things like if you've got uh, just a small spot. You know, Let's say you had an image of somebody with a spot on their shirt. You could remove it with that. Okay, now we get into some of the fun tools. Uh, the bloat tool is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> it's going to just bloat the areas that it touches. So you want to give my bigger nose, give her a bigger face. Okay, make that logo bloated. And the pinch tool is going to do the exact opposite. So if I want to pinch down my mouth, there we go. Pinch it down. Pinch down that eye. So just some fun tools that you can play around with. You know, nothing too exciting there. Now the, uh, the eyedropper tool just literally picks a color. So you click on that and it puts it in here so you can draw with it. So if you want to match colors with things, that's how you would do that. The uh, text tool, again, just like we did before, it just allows you to type in text. The magnifying tool just allows you to zoom in. And the hand tool, once we're zoomed in, allows you to move around the image. Okay, and if you notice over in the navigator, you can see this box that's around it. It shows you where you are when you move that around. And so those are all of your tools. So as you can see, this is a very full featured program. And uh, I hope this is helpful to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Be sure to download uh, our graphics package and use it with Pixlr and enjoy. He's Ray the Video Guy. Yeah, I'm Ray the Video Guy. His skill is where it's at. Even if he's a little fat, he's filled with video expertise. And has so much knowledge that you need. His 
YouTube ninja tricks can make your marketing so sick. He's Ray the Video Guy, yeah Ray.